Disaster analysis is really powerful and GIS. I hope you dig this. Just uh, if you ever get to the point where you are really trying to line up your your input grids for certain raster analyses, this is uh, the settings is what allows you to determine how it can be compressed, the format you want your raster stored in, the processing extent of your input grids, and other things like that. And another really, really smart tip trick is to, is to change the default working directory. So this will automatically kick all your outputs to a certain folder or geodatabase. And again, recommending a geodatabase whenever you're working with the output of certain raster analyses because it stores the files more efficiently, compacts them, they're easier to access in our catalog and they're more organized. So in your environment settings, you can change this, um, your workspace, your default workspace. And every time you start a session and you're working on different analyses, it's really smart to do that. Um, output coordinates are always really smart to be mindful of. So um, grid best grids best stored in project coordinate systems for analysis um, unless specified it will match the input um, and outputs can be resampled or reprojected if needed using environments um, one thing that's important to note is that projecting may degrade the accuracy of the data um, you definitely of, of course like always want to keep all raster inputs and outputs in the same coordinate system and the data frame should, uh, coordinate system should match the coordinate system of the data sets. So just be mindful. And processing extent, like I just mentioned earlier, when you're in your environment settings, is really important because the extent, uh, the processing extent can vary for different grids. And so you want to make sure that you're aligning the processing extent so that you're not cutting off data, you're not misaligning cells. And also, you're not wasting storage or processing time by having an extent that's way larger than you need it to be. Because what if you have all these values, right? And then your extent goes way beyond those values, and there's all this no data. That no data is still taking up storage because those cells, even though there's no data in them, are having to be stored in your raster as part of the extent. So you can, you can minimize that by being more aware of your processing extent and alignment. Cell size option is here as well, so you can basically re you can resample it. Um, so the default will be the maximum cell size of the inputs. So whatever, if you have multiple grids going into it, um, it'll default to the maximum cell size, and you can you can change this so to to match an existing data set um, that of one of the inputs. And analysis mask is really helpful too because. If you, for instance, want to mask a certain grid um, based on the outline or the border of another grid, you can you can specify that in your environment settings. So you you, you have all this uh, data and you want to clip your elevation only to the values of an existing grid. You can use that as a mask. So the mask basically is a clip, and or you could do it with polygons as well. And then extract by masks works exactly the same way as controlling the mask in the environment settings of a specific tool. You can also, there's a tool called extract by mask that does the exact same thing. So mask would be something that covers a grid, whatever, whatever values it covers, it will then clip it to that. And as always, you can, you can just click help and get information about the tools. So you can learn more how, what the typical inputs is, what the typical outputs are, how it works. Um, that's basically all I have for you for rasters. Um, thank you for listening. I hope that it wasn't too boring. And uh, I really think you're going to enjoy the lab for this week.